I am Dr. Kamini Walia and I coordinate uh, the Antimicrobial Resistance Initiative at the Division of Epidemiology and Communicable Diseases at Indian Council of Medical Research. Today I will be uh, talking to be you about uh, why antimicrobial resistance is a global threat and the importance of antimicrobial stewardship in its containment. So antimicrobial resistance, uh, there is a high burden of it in low middle income countries and uh, following the COVID pandemic, there has been heightened concern around the increasing threat of antimicrobial resistance. As per uh, one of the reports which was recently published uh, this year, which uh, documented uh, the disease burden related to AMR from 2019, it was estimated that AMR claimed uh, 4.95 million lives uh, in 2019, out of which 1.27 million deaths were directly caused by AMR. From our experience in Indian hospitals, we see that almost 30 to 50 percent mortality uh, is caused in the patients who acquire drug resistant pathogens. Uh, at the same time, the mean incremental cost for treating drug resistant infection in government hospital in India was found to be 40 percent higher than the non resistant uh, infections in the Indian patients. So, uh, what uh, antimicrobial resistance is threatening is that it is uh, threatening the advances that we made in the control of infectious diseases collectively, not just in our country, but globally. Uh, because of the high burden of uh, AMR in low middle income countries, uh, all our programs like malaria, HIV, tuberculosis, uh, they are uh, getting uh, uh, affected. In addition, we are seeing the increasing burden of hospital acquired infections with drug resistant pathogens, which are now complicating even the simple treatments and procedures like caesarean sections, uh, joint knee replacement or any other joint replacement surgeries. So, these pathogens are actually lurking in our hospitals as invisible threats and they claim invisible lives. The reason I call them invisible is that no, there is no system which is currently recording how much, uh, how many deaths in our hospitals are uh, happening because of the drug resistant infections. So, what are the consequences of uh, antibiotic resistance? Uh, there are consequences both for the patient and for the healthcare system. It leads to higher medical costs for the patient. Many a times the patients are meeting these costs uh, from uh, their pockets. Then there are prolonged hospital stays, there is increased mortality and there is also uh, increased uh, selection of further uh, resistant pathogens which uh, amplify and uh, uh, increase the threat of infections uh, in future. Now what are the main drivers of antimicrobial resistance? There is one key driver of AMR and which is the inappropriate use of antimicrobial agents, whether clinical or non-clinical. They accelerate the rate at which uh, the drug resistance develops, which includes the misuse, abuse and the overuse. COVID pandemic saw extensive overuse of, use of antimicrobials and also added to it was uh, hand sanitizer. Sometimes they were uh, antibiotic uh, supplemented hand sanitizers. So, all this would have led to development of drug resistant uh, pathogens and we re really need to maintain a close watch on how this particular uh, field uh, kind of uh, changes uh, with time. So, uh, Otherwise, there are many factors in our uh, healthcare system, uh, both uh, the social, the economic, as well as the clinical factors, which actually contribute to development of selective pressure, which results in development of resistance. Uh, we are a tropical country with a high burden of infectious diseases. There is do poor doctor to patient ratio, limited laboratory capacity, all this a reflection of poor investment in the healthcare system. The ID physicians, clinical pharmacists, infection control nurses are essentially not there uh, in most of the hospitals. Uh, then we also uh, use a lot of broad spectrum antimicrobials compared to uh, the narrow spectrum antimicrobials. Added to that is a patient behavior of self-medication, non-compliance. So all these factors, uh, the socio-economic factors also contribute to development of resistance. Besides this, we are a pretty big 12.4 billion uh, pharmaceutical industry. 
uh, the unregulated uh, use of antibiotics uh, is encouraged by the gap in the implementation of our regulatory system. Uh, the drugs are available without prescription, then there is a problem of counterfeit drugs, inappropriate fixed dose combinations and also uh, extensive use of antibiotics in livestock, poultry and agriculture. So, ICMR's uh, AMR initiative actually focuses on generating reliable evidence, improving the diagnosis by strengthening the diagnostic stewardship, working with hospitals to create systems of antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, working with hospitals to uh, strengthen the infection prevention and control practices, um, funding research on understanding mechanisms of resistance, transmission dynamics. Uh, we work with the uh, relevant stakeholders to create integrated One Health platforms as well as support basic and clinical research. We work with large number of hospitals within the country and also a large number of international organizations on different aspects of AMR. So, the first initiative was the surveillance initiative which started in 2013 and the aim was to capture the yearly trends and the patterns of AMR, uh, undertake the phenotypic and genotypic characterization, uh, external quality assurance system as well as track clonality outbreaks and transmission dynamics. In 2015, we added to it the infection prevention control program. We set up a first hospital acquired infection surveillance in the country. Uh, we also uh, initiated uh, systematic training programs to build capacity for infection prevention control as well as uh, the, both the programs on IPC and the stewardship. They focus at developing uh, customized interventions which are uh, relevant to the developing country settings which can be implemented in our country. Uh, antimicrobial stewardship we added in 2018. Uh, uh, one of the first few initiatives was to carry out training of the doctors on antimicrobial stewardship. This was followed by uh, establishing a structure and process of antimicrobial stewardship which included uh, creating antibiograms uh, for hospitals, helping them uh, create their own treatment guidelines. We also created a system to capture antimicrobial consumption in these hospitals. Uh, now, we are implementing AMSP strategies including uh, capturing clinical outcomes for uh, drug resistant infections in our country. So, this will provide us a very valuable data uh, which will be based on evidence from uh, within the country setting. So, we work with uh, almost 30 hospitals and labs across the country and these are the pathogens that we are focusing on. Uh, enterobacterials, gram-negative non-fermenters, staphylococci, uh, fecal pathogens like E. coli, Shigella, non-typhoidal salmonella and Vibrio cholerae, Antrococcus, uh, Fecium and Fecalis, Salmonella typhi and also a lot of fungal pathogens are now being reported by our network because we have systematically built the capacity of the hospitals in our uh, network to report fungal pathogens. Yet, uh, gram-negative organisms cause uh, the large proportion of uh, drug resistant infections in our country and they are becoming very challenging to treat. For example, uh, the imipenem susceptibility for E. coli has dropped steadily from 86% in 2016 to 64% in 2021. Klebsiella pneumoniae uh, carbapenem susceptibility has dropped from 65% in uh, 2016 to 45% in uh, 2020 and was at 43% for 2021. We publish this data every year and every year's report can be found on the ICMR website. So, uh, resistance to carbapenems actually has been increasing by 5 to 10 percent every year for all these pathogens and Acinetobacter recorded uh, resistance rates at 87 percent for the year 2021 which was very alarming. Uh, for the diarogenic pathogens, we have uh, uh, the data indicates that the norfloxacin susceptibility was poor. Uh, Salmonella typhi, they continue to remain susceptible to uh, cephalosporins, azithromycin, chloramphenicol, trimox, uh, cotramoxazole as well as uh, ampicillin. Once in a while, we do come across such reports. As you can see in this report, this is from a 10 year old child. Uh, reporting uh, resistance to ceftriaxone. So, uh, there is a need to continuously monitor how the pathogens are evolving and how this data should be utilized to guide treatment strategies across hospitals. Staphylococcus aureus uh, 
the susceptibility to erythromycin, clindamycin, um, ciprofloxacin, cotramoxazole and high level muporosin was more in MSSA as compared to MRSA. MRSA rates have increased uh, and they are increasing each year. Uh, last year we recorded 40 percent MRSA out of the total staff isolates. Uh, vancomycin and deptomycin uh, continue to show excellence, excellent activity. Linezolid resistance is increasing although at very low rates. Vancomycin resistance is alarming. It was around 14 percent or 15 percent, uh, six times higher in Enterococcus faecium as compared to Fecalis. So, Enterococcus is an important bug which should be uh, monitored in future. Um, a lot of our centers are also reporting fungal pathogens now. The fluconazole uh, susceptibility is around uh, 90 percent among Candida tropicalis, albicans and utilis. Declining susceptibility rates were uh, reported in uh, Candida paracylosis and glabrata. Candida auris uh, reporting rates have increased and they have very high uh, uh, resistance levels to fluconazole and extremely low susceptibility uh, of 2.6 percent. So, this is something that needs to be um, monitored and uh, attempt should be made to identify candida auris early so that uh, the treatment can be guided accordingly. Uh, otherwise, we only uh, excessive use of antifungals, we only contribute to the increasing problem of fungal antifungal resistance. Rhizopus arises, the most common mucorails predominantly susceptible to amphotericin B. There are uh, recurrent and relapsed cases of dermatophytosis which are reported and turbinafine resistance is almost at 45 to 70 percent in India. We also look at the mechanisms of resistance. These are the mechanisms of resistance which are currently operated in four important pathogens which is E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Acinetobacter bomini. And uh, E. coli has recently acquired uh, uh, penicillin binding protein 3. And many of the drugs which are in the pipeline or which are to be introduced in India recently will not be effective against these uh, uh, mechanisms of resistance. So, it is very important to continue to characterize the mechanisms of resistance that are prevalent in the country. So, that helps us in deciding uh, the treatment strategies for our patients. Now, uh, based on the data for last 4-5 years, these are the priority uh, pathogens for India. Carbapenem resistant enterobacterials, carbapenem resistant Acinetobacter baumannii, drug resistant Salmonella typhi, and Candida auris. They require aggressive action. Similarly, ESBLs, vancomycin resistant Enterococci, azole resistant Candida, they require sustained action. And we need to continuously monitor um, the MRSA, azole resistant Aspergillus, amphotericin B resistant Aspergillus flavus, uh, drug resistant Streno, Trophomonas maltophila colistin resistance enterobacterials as well as colistin resistant acinetobacter species. Now, we are going to digress a little bit and see uh, what kind of practices prevail as far as antimicrobial uh, prescribing is concerned in our country. So, these are the global figures, 30 percent of the hospitalized inpatients uh, at any uh, time receive antibiotics when they are uh, in the hospital. Over 30 percent of these antibiotics are prescribed inappropriately in community, 30 percent of pro, uh, surgical prophylaxis is inappropriate, 30 percent of pharmacy costs are due to antibiotics and 10 to 30 percent of pharmacy costs can be saved by a good antimicrobial stewardship program. What we see is that in our community 80 percent of the antibiotic use uh, occurs there and acute respiratory infections are the most common indication. And there are many uh, reasons which drive antibiotic use in a community which includes constraints on the consultation time of the physician, lack of appreciation of impact of the resistance. This is most common in the physicians as well as in the community. Considerable uh, diagnostic uncertainty because of the poor uh, laboratory infrastructure, absence of point of care diagnostics and uh, then all kind of patient and parental pressures to uh, prescribe antibiotics. Now, uh, the bar diagram on the right side shows uh, the consumption of antibiotic in India and as you can see, 
uh, the physicians in India they love to prescribe cephalosporins. The broad spectrum antimicrobials are effective against both gram positive and gram negative. And if you would break this down, cephalosporins into uh, the generation wise, you would see that higher generation uh, cephalosporins are also prescribed a lot. We also saw this happening during the COVID times. Uh, what we saw was uh, that the most of uh, the antibiotics were prescribed were broad spectrum antibiotics from uh, the watch and the reserve group of uh, WHO classification and uh, uh, the piperacillin, tazobactam, carbapenem, vancomycin, they all were prescribed indiscriminately in the hospitalized COVID patients. Now, how can we uh, move towards AMR containment? The first and foremost is uh, improving the evidence on the ground, which we are already working on, improving the diagnostic stewardship and infection control stewardship. Without these two, antimicrobial stewardship cannot stand on its own. Because for a physician to prescribe antimicrobials responsibly, he would need a diagnostic test report, uh, which he can trust, like what is the pathogen that is uh, there in the infection. And also, what is the infection uh, rate within a hospital or in a community? Most of the time, what we see is that antimicrobials are being prescribed to co compensate for a poor infection control, whether it is in a community or whether it is in a hospital. Whenever the physicians do not trust the hospital's infection control system, they are more likely to prescribe more than two or three antibiotics to his patient because no physician wants to lose the patient. So, uh, antimicrobial stewardship is essentially a coordinated uh, set of interventions which are designed to improve and measure the appropriate use of antimicrobial agents by promoting selection of optimal antimicrobial drug regimen including the dosing, duration uh, and the route of administration. So, uh, the antimicrobial stewardship uh, practice ensures that the patient uh, receives an optimal treatment. Uh, it also aims to ensure the effectiveness of broad spectrum antibiotic by restricting its use in the long run, reduce inappropriate use of antibiotics for self-limiting infections like cough and cold, ensure that healthcare professionals, patients as well as public, they all understand that antibiotics need to be used responsibly and prudently. Now, uh, the Australian Commission uh, on Safety and Quality Healthcare they uh, prescribe following four uh, practices which should be uh, considered and which are considered desirable as per the uh, available resources. Education of prescribers, pharmacists and nurses about good antimicrobial prescribing practice, use of point of care interventions, uh, streamlining of and de-escalation of therapy, dose optimization or parenteral to uh, oral conversion, using of IT systems uh, such as electronic prescribing with the clinical decision support or an online approval systems and annually publishing the facility specific antimicrobial susceptibility data and this is the most important uh, and every hospital should try to have their own antibiogram and have an antibiotic policy based on those antibiograms. Now, antimicrobial stewardship for a long time uh, was considered only the microbiologist's business. But the microbiologist's role is only limited to providing antibiogram for local antibiotic policy. Beyond that, administrators need to provide the logistic support, the doctors need to prescribe antibiotics following local policy, nurses uh, uh, have to monitor uh, the antibiotic uh, administration in a timely manner, prompt review, therapeutic drug monitoring and adverse reaction monitoring as well as a very important role in infection control. And the pharmacists are needed to ensure antibiotics are prescribed as per policy, provide prompt review and advise on therapeutic drug monitoring results. Now, these are the key elements of antimicrobial stewardship. There has to be a microbiology lab, there has to be an IT system. Uh, which will uh, be helpful in dissemination of resources like antimicrobial stewardship guidelines, treatment guidelines which a hospital has, then a system to monitor uh, the process and outcomes that should be measured to monitor the process and its implementation. A comprehensive multidisciplinary team is needed as I mentioned in my previous uh, slide. 
uh, then there should be resource materials to support AMSP. If the doctor does not have a uh, policy to fall back on, what is he going to prescribe and based on what? And education and awareness of the hospital staff on antimicrobial stewardship has to be a continuous process. These are the two key pillars of antimicrobial stewardship uh, strategies. Uh, first is the prospective audit and feedback. Uh, this is when a doctor is uh, uh, supported to prescribe whatever he wants to prescribe, but within 24 hours he has to justify why I am uh, prescribing this particular medicine. And he is also provided feedback by the pharmacist on an ID physician uh, on, on his prescription. The second is uh, formulary restriction and pre-authorization. Uh, under this system, uh, no doctor can prescribe a certain uh, drug, something like a colistin. Most of the uh, hospitals like to add colistin in formulary restriction without having approval from the senior person or someone who has been delegated this responsibility. This is sometimes not favored well in the Indian hospitals as it restricts the autonomy of the uh, doctors to prescribe medicines and prescriptive audit and intervention and feedback is actually uh, more practiced and uh, more favorable, but it is a, again a very uh, resource intensive exercise. Now, every system uh, is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. Uh, what we found uh, in our survey that we undertook in 2013 was that uh, many hospitals, we uh, surveyed uh, almost 26 hospitals for availability of accreditations, AMSP, infection control and treatment guidelines whether uh, the AMSP teams were available and even when these committees were available, when how frequently did they meet, did they undertake the AMR uh, data analysis, did the, these hospitals analyze their antimicrobial uh, usage data analysis or uh, did they undertake the AMSP outcome analysis. These are the hospitals, many private and government hospitals participated in it. What we found that uh, Accreditations were better in private hospitals, maybe because that is their requirement uh, to uh, uh, deliver uh, the kind of services that they do. AMSP documents were found only in four hospitals, all of them were private. Infection control document was available in all the hospitals. Only private uh, hospitals had ID physicians and clinical pharmacists and most government hospitals or any government hospital did not have that. Antimicrobial resistance data analysis was being by, done by all the uh, tertiary care hospitals who participated in this program. Antimicrobial uh, agent usage data analysis was being done only by 5 out of the 20 and HIC compliance audit was performed only by 12 out of the 20 hospitals. Now, uh, the key pillars of AMSP practice which I discussed just now, the prescription or audit and feedback was being practiced only by 2 out of the 20. And uh, the other AMSB strategies uh, which were very different were being uh, practiced only in 6 out of the 20 hospitals. Uh, AMA prescription guidelines uh, were available with 13 um, private, uh, total 13 hospitals out of which 8 were private and 5 were government hospitals. And uh, uh, comprehensive treatment guidelines were missing in most hospitals, although syndrome specific available uh, guidelines were available. AMSP was not linked with an any IT system in most hospitals. So, following this uh, ICMR initiated um, a systematic uh, capacity building program for antimicrobial stewardship. We invited a five member team from all hospitals which included an administrator, a physician, a microbiologist, a clinical pharmacist and a infection control nurse. We trained this five member team from each hospital. Uh, on AMSP, we did 5 workshops across the country and almost trained uh, more than 60 medical colleges and hospitals both from government and private on AMSP. So, uh, in a nutshell almost 3 to 400 staff were trained and we, with a small funding we initiated AMSP projects in ICMR AMR network. Uh, we also published the treatment, latest treatment guideline was published in 2019. And what we found was that there was significant improvement in the practice of antimicrobial stewardship after uh, we initiated in a, it in a project form. Uh, almost all hospitals now had AMSP document and AMSP committees. They were meeting regularly as well. Uh, AMR data analysis was being done by 100% of the hospitals. Hospital antibiotic policy was created by all the hospitals who participated in this program. 
the point prevalence of cultures which was being done only by 10% hospitals earlier was now being done by 100% hospitals antimicrobial agent usage data analysis were was being done by all the hospitals uh, more than 70% hospitals include formulary restrictions and uh, also uh, there were uh, uh, two hospitals created the permanent post of a clinical pharmacist following the implementation of this program the challenges faced in implementation was the time uh, which was available because the pi for all these projects were clinicians or intensivists so uh, the time that they have uh, to uh, give to this kind of a project monitoring is very limited because they have lot of clinical and administrative responsibilities then uh, sustaining the funding after the completion of the project was a challenge uh, manpower was difficult to get especially in the government funded hospitals uh, the support from peers sometimes uh, was not there and uh, the data capturing modules uh, were uh, cited as one of the key challenge by most of the hospitals. So what we learnt from uh, doing this small study although it was interrupted by COVID was that there was significant improvement in implementation of AMS in tertiary care institutes. The structured training programs and uh, resource uh, allocating resources are necessary for in initiating AMSP activities in these hospitals. Uh, most of the hospitals do not have ID physicians. So in absence of ID physicians, the leadership can be provided by intensivists or physicians who have passion for AMSP. For infection control, we have a collaboration with CDC under which we are trying to create a trained workforce on infection prevention and control in these hospitals so that uh, the IPC rates are less, there are less rates of CLABCs or uh, catheter associated UTIs thus requiring less antimicrobial uh, prescriptions. Now we are also working to strengthen diagnostic stewardship. Uh, we have a task force on AMR diagnostics. Uh, in which we are trying to identify uh, any innovative products which have been developed within the country and which can be introduced in the system, uh, which can improve the reporting of uh, infections, their AMST patterns as well as uh, creating target product profiles, doing the cost effectiveness studies uh, of di using diagnostics and uh, so that this data is available from India. With FIND, we are working on a project which is looking at reducing antimicrobial prescriptions using commercially available diagnostics. Uh, in collaboration with London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, we uh, also created an online training course on the role of diagnostics in AMR response. And this course goes live every year uh, in the Antimicrobial Awareness Week and many Indian uh, uh, microbiologists and physicians have benefited and participated in this course. Now, uh, having done a lot of work in the tertiary care hospital, we are expanding this initiative to the mid-level hospitals, which includes the district hospitals and nursing homes. Uh, now, this initiative is so important because most of the time, the tertiary care hospitals receive the patients uh, who have had previous hospitalizations and had surgeries and had treatments from the secondary level hospitals, whereas there, there is no awareness on antimicrobial stewardship or IPC. So we are working with almost uh, 92, 94 nursing homes and district hospitals as a part of uh, this activity. Uh, government has also taken uh, cognizance of the fact that uh, the anti, uh, there needs to be a regulatory oversight on uh, availability of antimicrobials. On the advice of ICMR, government banned 68 fixed drug combinations uh, in 2018. There was a ban on colistin as a, uh, for use as growth promoter in 2019 and recently uh, there was a notification on prohibition of streptomycin and tetracycline in agriculture because this particular combination uh, negatively impacts our TB uh, control program. So uh, this regulatory stewardship is obviously very important. Uh, government has fixed uh, standards for uh, the tolerance limits of antibiotics in seafood. Uh, however, the one in the poultry is still uh, not done because there is an extensive use of antimicrobials in poultry as well. Then uh, the Central Pollution Control Board is also trying to uh, create standards for uh, direct uh, discharge of antibiotic emission by pharma sector and they are trying to develop standard for antibiotic residues in effluents. 
So we need new drugs for the patients and uh, for 30 years there has not been a new product which has been introduced in the market. Uh, we also have large burden of gram negative infections and we would really need new uh, treatment models, uh, treatment uh, molecules for uh, treating these uh, patients who have extensively drug resistant uh, 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 pathogens. But uh, the uh, truth is that um, it makes more sense to res uh, use responsibly and judiciously what we have today and that is why we need a strong antimicrobial stewardship program because a bird in hand is better than uh, two in the bush. Uh, development of antimicrobials is a very resource intensive exercise. You can uh, invest billions of dollars in new drug development and uh, you may find that uh, within two years the drug has developed. Uh, the pathogens have developed resistance to that drug. So, um, while we look for new drugs, new drug molecules, we must strengthen the antimicrobial stewardship program within our country so that we judiciously use what we have today. We have seen in typhoid that uh, when the drugs like uh, amoxicillin, cotramoxazole, chloramphenicol was not used for 20 years, we have seen uh, that they have again become sensitive to those drugs. So, it clearly uh, uh, conveys that extensive drug use is one of the key drivers of antimicrobial uh, pressure which leads to development of drug resistant pathogens and using judiciously uh, the antimicrobials uh, uh, today, what we have today is our best chance to survive the pandemic of uh, antimicrobial resistance. Antimicrobial stewardship does sound like a very uh, intense program, uh, it is both resource intensive, it uh, requires training, uh, but the countries who implemented the evidence based uh, AMSP program, they improved the patient safety profile, they improved community resistance profiles and in the long run they found that it made uh, financial success as well. So, we need to take the threat of antimicrobial resistance seriously today, otherwise we will miss on uh, 18 targets out of the 9 sustainable development goals that we want to achieve as a country as well as globally. Thank you.